med beds is kind of your your focus. Maybe you have other modalities, but I'm I'm kind of familiar with you and and uh, your association with med beds. What did you do before, and what brought you to this place? You can go. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, before and, and we've done lots of different things. Um, there's there's no short answer. I basically have never had a normal job where I arrived at 8.30, 9 o'clock and worked till 5 o'clock. I've always been self-employed in one form or another. Um, Initially, I was in the family business, which was running stress management um, and meditation type weekend workshops for people um, all over the world. So I would travel extensively talking about um, utilising the alpha and theta levels of the brain to be more effective in business, in study, and then, of course, raising your energy, working on your aches and pains, relieving stress-related conditions, that sort of thing. Um, As as I went um, through that and the journey of life, I sort of um, ended my first marriage and did a complete shift in what I wanted to do. And I did not want to travel anymore. I did not want to go away for work. I just really then turned to starting up another business in the environmental management space. And that Mm. was around the time I met Roxy and she just had a regular job in an insurance brokerage. And um, after she was around me, you know, an ex motivational speaker for two or three years, I said, what, let's quit your job and start the own insurance brokerage. So we started that and built that up and successfully sold that um, and did quite well out of that and moved our life to online sales And we were selling things on Amazon and went right down that path of getting things made in China, shipping them to America, selling people beach products. So we loved all of that. And then we had our spiritual awakening. And we went to Costa Rica. We did four nights of ayahuasca in the jungle and fully just came back and went, you know what? No more service to self. It's time to step up and go into service to others. And that's how Awakening Education was born. And we just, we just started, we had no idea what, what the outcome was going to be. We just knew that, um, you, you know, we, we just wanted to be of service to others. And we just knew that this message to help people realise there's so much more inside them that they realise and that they're not just an individual operating they're they're more like a collective you know they're like a a wave in an ocean of life and they're not an individual at all and to rediscover who you are and that spark that's within is sort of like help that that, the mission to help people realize that is sort of what our, our mission is now but sort of more working on people who are almost awake already you know it's not so much about waking people up but taking the people who are awake you know, who are light workers or way showers and showing them how to actually, what to do with that, how to, you know, sort of. How to take it to the next level. That's it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So then we, uh, we started on the awakening journey, I guess, and to connect the galactic side of things for, uh, for the viewers here today, we started meditating and going in and doing lots of healing work on ourselves and ETs kept popping in my meditations. And, you know, for me, I, I wasn't exposed to any of this and it actually quite, it scared me a lot. It frightened me, the fact that we had ETs. Oh, my God, you know, I was instantly, you know, getting led to think bigger, think bigger, think outside this planet and uh, then starting to remember who we are, why we're here and what the mission was. And that just kept coming really loudly for us. And so we kept listening and listening and Pete saying to me, oh, my God, are we going to be those people talking about ETs? And yeah, right. I'm like, yeah, I think we are. I think that's yeah, it, it's a big, It's a big pill to swallow. It really is. Um, yeah. You know, what's interesting, though, is, you know, I was thinking a little bit about this and how I was going to frame it for some of my viewers. Um, you know, I, I actually have some friends that until recently did not even believe in ETs. And the reason they now believe in ETs is because, um, you know, the, the Pentagon and the Navy is now like, th- these are these are actual sightings and they've been going on for years. And we're just now telling you about that. But it, it is official, you know, gavel on the on the um, on the desk. 
these things exist. We can't explain them. They've been around for a long time and we have not been talking about it. Now we are. And this is the government now saying this, you know, uh, here in the US. And so a number of my friends were like, I, I never believed in this stuff before, but I guess now I do. <laughs> um, you take it another step further and do they interact with humans? You know, my belief would be if they've been around for a while. I mean, there's plenty of humans that claim that they have interacted with them. Um, so my thought would be, yes. Um, is there technology that can help us? My thought would be, yes. Do they share it with us? Maybe so. Um, I mean, what I experienced, I had a session with you, I experienced, and it was, it was pretty fantastic. I mean, um, yeah, <laughs> it was pretty fantastic. I tell you what. So, um, <laughs> But I, I would like to, so, so you were connecting, I guess, in your meditation with, with the ETs. How did things go forward from there? So, yeah, like we were very vulnerable, stepping out on, for the first time, talking about our awakening was a huge deal um, with our family and our friends. Right. And then stepping out once again at another level, talking about galactic and star systems and species, different extraterrestrial species that are, you know, connecting with us and giving us downloads. And then, um, yeah, just with the passion and the desire and the intention to connect further and further and learn more about this, I kept traveling with my consciousness up to the quantum field and being led by the ETs. Okay, this is the starship now and this is a Galactic Federation starship here for... Um, help to help humanity and its elevation of consciousness at this time of the great awakening. So, you know, every little time I went up there, I was getting shown a little bit more, a little bit more in my mind's eye. So what we're doing, essentially, our bodies are staying here on this planet in this reality and our light body is traveling to the, um, the quantum field. Um, and then, you know, little bit by little bit, when the trust between us was getting stronger and um, better relationship and I could comprehend it on a human level without freak, because that's the last thing they want to do is scare us, put fear in us. You know, they want it to be a smooth flowing uh, relationship. And obviously our consciousness needs to be at that level to comprehend everything. So as we were elevating up, we were getting shown technology aboard the ship and the Palladians were showing, you know, showing up, showing me what their names were called, what they looked like, what the technology did. And little bit by little bit, we were led to the med bed and then they started saying, okay, guys, you are ready to get this out and start bridging the world, bridging earth and the galactic for awareness for the planet so we can start educating and, you know, expanding the consciousness of individuals on the planet. Wow. Well, that's fantastic. I mean, um, I sure felt, I, I felt so much better afterwards and that went on for many days. And, and of course the information that was that, that you, um, you know, that you gave me, I mean, I've never met you before, right? You're in Australia. Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah. And the information that you were coming up with is, uh, you know, it, it was a nail on the head um, and it was, it was valuable information, um, stuff that I needed to hear. Yeah. So, uh, so thank you. And you're welcome. <laughs> this is a amazing thing that you have going on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's really profound. We feel very blessed to have this opportunity. And it's not just us that has the capability of doing this. Every individual on the planet can access the starship. There is um, many starships around the globe at this time, many extraterrestrial beings of high frequency ready to help connect and heal people. Um, we're not the special ones. Everyone can definitely do okay. this. It's just around, um, you know, focusing on your inner temple, connecting to your heart, getting out of our brain, moving into our heart space and having the desire to want to elevate your consciousness and become um, enlightened, become elevated with your frequency. Yeah. So, you know, everyone definitely can do this. Hey. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I want to be able to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, well, so we've you been have... working um, with, with coming up with a process to actually, you know, so someone like yourself who's actually had the Medbed experience 
and gone, wow, I actually felt that. Because a lot of people, I mean, initially are curious but they're okay. like, I, you know, they get on the call and they're like, I'll, I'll just see what happens, right? And when you've got that intention of being open and okay. no, you know, it, it's it's hard for some people when they go in there and they're like, I want this thing or I want that thing or, you know, and they're too hard. It's be- best if you're open and you let the divine decide what needs to come out in the session, as you would have experienced. You get right. things you really need to hear. It like helps to heal your heart. You, you notice you feel more higher vibe afterwards. That's mm-hmm. what people notice after the session. But what we've been loving is taking someone who's then experienced it and said, you know what, you can learn to help your friends and family. This is a process. You can learn the process. If you do the work on yourself and learn the process in conjunction with it, you could use it to help your friends and family. And we're taking a group through that at the moment. And they're, they're really getting towards the end of it now. So they're getting excited and they're starting to notice that they can tune into another person and they can pick up on this stuff too. Wow. Yeah. So you have uh, classes now available, correct? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we take the person. So you came to us and we did a med bed session and um, right. I know you're interested in, in doing this as well. But we walk them through, we, we do the healing and the upgrade. And, you know, some people need a few sessions. Some people might be elevated already and right. just want that frequency upgrade and, you know, to connect with the quantum field because it's a very powerful energy and frequency when we're up there. It's so different to the reality here on the earth. We're in a 3D consciousness here in this reality on this planet and we're shifting the frequency on the planet and the humans of the individuals all around the world into higher states of consciousness. Consciousness. So our frequency is raising, okay? And so when we're going to the quantum field, the frequency up there is a lot higher than we are down here. So, right. you know, it's more powerful. The plasma and the cosmic light uh, force energy is a lot more powerful for healing. And, you know, it, it just removes density quite easily. But we need to also in the session, we have to have awareness around our emotional traumas. So we have to pull the weed out of the garden, so to speak, and right. get to where the emotional trauma or the false belief began. And the ETs help us and guide us for, for this um, healing while the person's in the med bed because we can't remove the density from, you know, in the body without having awareness where the emotion was coming right. from. Yeah. So you need to get the person at a, a higher vibration in order for them to be able to take, to take full advantage and be able to tune in to the higher frequencies. Yeah. And the assistance of the, the palladium beings, we're working with the palladium beings. So they are giving us um, messages while the, we bring the patient up to the med bed. So they're telepathically communicating with us and they're guiding us where to go firstly on the body. And we can also tune in to the person and let them know what's happening by verbally talking over Zoom um, on the camera. So they're here laying down and we've got their light body in the starship in the quantum field. So everything that we do to the light body, we bring it back down through a stargate and integrate it down into this physical realm. And then it integrates the frequency Mm -hmm. of the work that we do in the quantum field then integrates into the physical body here and it takes sometimes people you know feel it instantly like you might have um just depends everyone's different so over the next two to three days we're integrating the frequency and it's a gradual process what we don't want is to overstimulate and over and burn out the circuitry in a human's body that's the last thing we want to do okay that sounds right (laughs) yeah it's really important that you know we don't shift dramatically every day do we where it's a gradual process i see because of the elevation of frequency our human body needs to you know get used to all of these upgrades if that makes sense no that makes sense yeah yeah Yeah, i I just couldn't believe it when i was sitting down laying down i mean this was definitely the the most unique modality that i've ever um ever experienced and I, I mean, I felt an awful lot of it. And, and really, it really just it baffles me how like healing energies can just, they're non-local. Like I, I work a lot with Reiki and energetic modalities like that. And that, that still continues to blow my mind because these days, most energy sessions are done virtually. And, you know, I can often feel Reiki and I can recognize it. And sometimes I can 
tell whether it's one mo- modality or another modality because I'm, I'm pretty sensitive in that way. But yeah, this was, this was different. I mean, it was the same in the sense that I could feel it. Um, but it had definitely had a little different sensation than, you know, more traditional Reiki, I guess, if Reiki is traditional. Yeah, more traditional energy healing modalities, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and, you know, so. I think it's just evolution of consciousness, right? So we've used Reiki for a long time and energy healing in the room. And now we're, our consciousness is, is um, growing and elevating and we're able to telepathically communicate with someone on the other side of the world. You know, ever heard of those people that get the message and then pick up the phone and ring mum or dad back and right. say, yes. hey, da, 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 da. so we are so much more powerful than we have ever learned because of our, we've just been held in a 3D density for so long. This reality, there's so much more potential um, for us in, and we, we have so yes. much to learn. And, you know, it's all about tapping into those, senses our pineal gland we we, most people don't even know what a pineal gland is um so if we we all start to learn of the capabilities of um the full potential of us as individuals we're so magical and powerful i think the reason why we everyone is able to do this is because of that point that everyone is interconnected so once people go through their awakening and I'm, I'm sure you sort of remember when you started to have that awakening oh, yeah. where you just, and there's a whole series of things that happen, right? When you go through that, I mean, initially you start to realize that, hang on, is this like, is everyone just stuck in the game? You know, are they all right. just in the matrix going through their day to day? And once you realize that, you, you often really want to get away from it. Have you ever been in those situations where, you know, friends or family are talking about, you know, life, you know, and right. they're complaining and they're bitching and they're talking about their money or their worries of politics or this and that, and you just go, oh, my gosh, doesn't anyone want to talk about elevation or consciousness or, you know, something right. exciting or expanding? And you start then in this you know, awakening process to want to consume information, right? That's the next stage. So you go, right, what am I going to learn? And you're like on YouTube or you're on Gaia or you're on whatever you go to. You're watching this, you're learning that, and you're all excited and you just want to like learn and learn and learn because you're still in that formative stage. And then eventually if people go into it enough. And then there's all rabbit holes that you can fall down, right? You can fall down the QAnon and the conspiracies and that's the cabal and it's the, oh, and everyone's out to get us and all of that stuff. And you can go down that part and get kind of stuck in that as part of the so-called awakening, or mm-hmm. it can become more what I would term a spiritual awakening. And the spiritual awakening is where you kind of go down that, but you realize it all circles back and it's actually all about self. The, the happiness and the contentment and the divinity that we're looking for isn't in Tibet or Nepal or, you know, found here with this guru or that modality or whatever. It's actually just in here. Right? And right. we've got to get ourselves out of the way, right? We, so we've got to get our old stories. We've got to get our ego construct, our personality out of the way and just stop for a minute and listen and go within and learn to tap into what is actually already there. And people hear that and they go, oh, okay, that's get out of the head, move move into the heart, learn to be the observer. You know, people hear, well, oh, yeah, I've heard that before. (laughs) (laughs) Excellent, great. All right, yep, I'm going to do that now. And it's still in the mind, right? They're still, okay, I'm going to do that. And they catch themselves having a negative thought. No, 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 don't do that. I'll try and be positive. And, you know, it's fake it till you make it kind of stuff. Right, right. And then they go, oh, you know. I'm still, I haven't got my vibration up. I've got to get my vibration up. Right, oh, I'll drink the green smoothies. I'm on the clean water. You know, I'm meditating and they're having somewhat success with that, trying to get their vibration up so that they can connect better. But this is where the person's starting to get on the right track. Because (laughs) what then is the biggest thing from stopping your vibration going up is the density stored within your body. 
That's what the session worked on for you, Lauren. Went right. into how emotional, mental, like things that happen in life get stored in our physical body, right? And anyone who's done reading would have heard of this before. Illness first occurs in the mind before it occurs in the physical body. And everyone would know that if they've ever had a really stressful day at work or they've got a lot going on in their life and they're tired in the shoulders or they're tired mm -hmm. in the neck or they get a headache. I mean, they haven't been swinging the pickaxe all day. It's just right. that they've been mentally engaged in a state and it's affected their physical body. So when we're going through life and all these traumas happen, often there's no debrief when you're three, four, seven, nine, 12, 18, whatever, and something goes on, you store that in your physical body. And of course, what we do is we bury it. And we right. push it all down and we put on a happy face and soldier on and pretend everything's normal. <laughs> right. And usually only when you're drunk or you're depressed or you're hungry or irritated, you go, <laughs> right and you're like ah, and people get angry or frustrated or overwhelmed and it's not really that situation right there in their life it can be a culmination of pressure from years of bottling stuff up and we've all sort of heard of that before so as you move to bring it back to vibration as you work on yourself and you remove the density so you do the inner child work you learn to clear those blocks out of your energy field can you see how removing that density is then going to help at an energetic level? You, I mean, you feel better. You don't have to positive think. You just are positive. And then, of course, the vibration that you are means that you can then plug into higher vibrational information. Because if you're down here and there's information up there that you're wanting to plug into, the way to get to that channel is to get yourself on a similar vibration. It's a bit like the radio. You've got to tune the radio to the right mm -hmm. channel. Our whole vessel, our being is that station that we've got to tune to higher vibrational information. When you get to that on your spiritual awakening journey, that's where, so at a let's call it the neuroscience then is beyond just meditation, beyond alpha and theta levels of the brain, your brain's going into the gamma state. So when you're at the gamma state, it's the level of divinity. So that's where you can connect to the divine. Your crown chakra completely opens and the knowings and the wisdom and that bliss if, that, that flows through that gives you tears as you think of it. I mean, right. it's the whole feeling of that oneness that we talked about, finding that, that that's within. That's this spark of the divine that you hear about on all the channels. Everyone's, you're a spark of the divine. And sometimes <laughs> people think, I don't really feel like a spark. <laughs> I'm not feeling real sparky. Because that's life, right? That, that's how your soul's growing. Your, your soul is growing through 3D, through the emotional pain and all of that stuff. That's not like meaningless, horrible obstacles to the growth. It is the growth. All of those things are necessary. Just like we need to be grateful for the beautiful sunny day and the sunset and the time with the family, we need to be grateful for the times where we felt like rubbish and we lay on our bed and cried because we've been betrayed or hurt or had wrong done by us. Our soul grows more in those moments than when you're having a really great day, right? Because it doesn't take a lot of depth right. to grow. So getting the vibration up is what the Medbed experience sort of helps you to do. But this is why it's like a key in helping you in your spiritual awakening process, because it's helping your vibration to go up. And that's why you, you notice afterwards, you, you're saying even yourself, go, wow, I just I like I noticed it. Something's happened. It's the vibration of your being went up. And I know that was a long explanation of how it fits into a spiritual awakening, but it's important for people to realize because when I work with a lot of people who have had an awakening, they feel stuck, right? They've watched the YouTubes, they've done the work, they did Reiki, they did breath work, they got in an ice bath, they've, you know, they've done all the different things, and they, know, but they feel stuck, you know? And, and it's because that answer then isn't, you got to go and do this course or that, this or whatever. It's you've got to do some like real work deep in here to release mm -hmm. your own blocks or really make a high priority getting your vibration up.
And the med med bed can help with that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and also in that session, um, in the med bed, the frequency is is upgrading our cells and our bones and our organs and our field, but we're also being led to certain ages where we can bring awareness to a situation that happened in your life. You know, yeah. we're, we're looking and entertaining when, you know, our mum or dad didn't love us or didn't hug us or we felt adopted our whole life or we felt like the black sheep or we felt alone, you know, all of these feelings, they, they need to be honoured and nurtured and brought back in. We can't ascend leaving part of ourselves back at three years of age. We have to go back and, and get that person, that get that little girl or little boy and bring it in for the ascension. And that's what the ETs are helping us. That's the key. That's a gate. That's a key to higher states of consciousness, to, to bring ourselves back into whole. I actually really want to help people get it because it is so common to get people on the call who you don't need to convince them to to awaken that you know right. they've already awoken they've already gone okay I'm awake but they're stuck a lot of them are stuck they want a better connection to the divine they they want to feel more in flow in their day to day and they don't know how to do it. You know, they're, they're sitting there going, maybe this galactic connection is the answer that I've been looking for. I've always felt like there was something more out there. I always felt like they were trying to get through to me or connect to me, but I didn't know how. And this is where we're sort of showing them how to bridge that gap and to connect. And when, when you first connect, you connect to the Palladians because they can bring their vibration down to a lower okay. frequency closer to ours, but they help to bring your vibration up. And as your vibration goes up, you can tap into higher vibrational beings. Arcturians come through, Syrians might come through, you might get fifth to sixth dimensional light beings come through, archangels, and of course, feel source and the divine come through in a session, which when people do, they often, they weep in the session, they feel that bliss, that energy. Mm. Well, that's actually what I was going to hit on was I was curious as to um, what height and high vibration are the ETs um, compared to like angelic vibration or archangels and, and, and some of, you know, some of the other people that you entities, I guess, that you call on. And I assume there's like different tiers. And you just mentioned the Palladians are able to kind of lower their vibration to help bring us up. Um, can you talk a little bit more about that? Is there kind of a, a, a tier as to? <laughs> um, uh, most definitely there is, yeah. Okay. It's got to do with how the session moves through and why we work with the, Pleiad the Pleiadians, but it's the, like the Galactic Federation is a lot of different beings that have different ranges of vibration and different roles. And we find that for most people, the Palladians come through and they're the healers. They've got beautiful energy, caring, almost cheeky, jovial. They're, they're like funny, right? They have yeah. a sense of humour. Hmm. And it's a lovely energy for us because we're familiar with that, right? Because we sort of know it. At an energetic level, though, Palladians are so great in working with humans because they work in... Um, the higher fourth to fifth dimension. So they can e more easily bring their vibration down to meet, particularly someone who's awake and open and wanting to learn to improve themselves and get a bit of an energetic connection and bring the person up. And for many in a session, they feel like their vibration goes up. I see a lot of people's chakras open, their energy field gets really, really strong and bright. And, you know, sometimes it can be like off the scale. And it's so interesting when their vibration's up. This is then often when an Arcturian might come through mm. or a Syrian being might come through. And the energy's different. It's... Mm -hmm. There's still a lot of unconditional love there, but it goes from playful to profound hmm. and deep. And there's all this galactic lineage and ancient wisdom and love and grace. And 
it's like an overwhelming feeling of they like care so much and you feel so precious and special to them mm. and th they they work because you're in this high vi vibrational state with then healing you at a different level you know there's different levels that we can be at where we can have different levels of healing and a lot of people when they're at that higher vibrational state can then heal that feeling of is there like something wrong with them they they have that feeling of being more at peace with you know sometimes people feel like they don't belong here like you know what am i doing here on earth this isn't where i'm supposed to be you know and that manifested itself in you know what am i doing in this family right you had that growing up yeah. it was always like what am I doing in this family? I feel like I'm adopted. I'm the rebel. I'm the odd <laughs> one out. Like Roxy had all of all of those classic things that we see in so many sessions, people coming through. And then all of a sudden, you'll be getting towards the end of the session, your vibrations up, you're getting all this galactic wisdom and connection and knowledge. And then like an archangel will like come on through. And uh, oh, it, it could be Archangel Michael oh, or geez. Raphael. Yeah, oh, right. <laughs> I remember once I heard Mother Mary came through, and this this grace just filled the session, and we both just started crying. This woman and I were like, "Oh, it's so beautiful!" Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it. just to, to feel the vibration of that, you know, you're in high fifth, six dimensional beings. It's like the level of like a collective consciousness a level of, you know, super high vibration. And when that crown gets open through those different healing techniques that um, we tap into, the feeling of the bliss and the divine and the, the true light, like almost feeling the connection back to source, because that's where we're all going back to. We can go back the long way and, and it's slow, or we can go back the direct way. And for people who come across this sort of information and they, they even get led by their higher self to see an interview like this, if everything happens for a reason, they're probably an old soul. They're probably already going through an awakening and they're already starting to listen to themselves, listen to their guides, be divinely guided, and they're hearing this information. And I'm sure it's making so much sense to them. Because, you know, when you hear truth, it just sp it speaks to your heart, not to your head. Ever gotcha. had that before? Yeah, yeah. You know, you hear something yeah. and you just go, oh, you feel it here. Not yeah, up absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And that's what, what Roxy and I had when we were getting led around this information. We are like, oh, we just got to do that. And then my brain would kick in. It was like, my friends are going to think I am absolutely crazy if at the <laughs> next barbecue I say to them, you know what we're doing? <laughs> We're taking clients up to the ship and getting the Palladians to work on them. I, mean, I'm like, I don't know if I'm ready to do that yet, Rox. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's a lot. Um, so like with the archangels or, or angels or like Mother Mary, um, you know, I guess you can kind of feel their energy. They just kind of emanate that em energy. When it comes to ETs, I guess they need a bed in order for that to happen i mean it, it just seems like there's there's a distinction there with the angels i always at least envision and based on what i've i've heard they just emanate en energy and and you know some people can feel it and it's you know energetic healing and that's fantastic but with the ets so they actually they're like well you know we're not going to so much emanate that to you we're gonna how about if you get hop in the bed i mean <laughs> and, and then then we can make that happen um Am I on the right track there or is that no, really so, not the case? No, no, so you, I get where you're coming from. So the ETs have a present, like our, our human species, we have energy. So you feel when okay. someone comes into your aura field, okay? So it's the same with ETs. They're higher frequency, you'll feel their energy come in. So I'll be sitting here and all of a sudden I'll feel the energy of the Palladians being next to me when I tap into that energy. Gotcha. Okay, so when we're taking them to the quantum field, their beings can be a feeling or they can be light. So I see things in x-ray vision when we go to the quantum field. So I can see into the body, into the organs. So the, the med bed is actually just plasma light from the cosmos. It's high frequency light. The ETs are putting energy into it from themselves. They are holding their own presence mm. and their own energy. 
So when we raise our frequency, you need to remember the Palladians are on an evolution of consciousness journey as well. So they are just you know, a few years ahead of us in, in, time, in terms of dimensions, you know. They're just right. a little bit ahead of us on their evolution of consciousness. We are in 3D, 4D and tapping in and out of 5D consciousness on this planet right now. Okay, they are having the capability of fifth dimension to sixth dimension uh, consciousness so they can shape shift, they can go in and out of star portals, they can travel into dimensionally from this um, solar system to another star system with their ET uh, um, technology and they can also offer healing modalities of high frequency. So the Palladians are coming from um, the Palladian star system, which is made up of mum and dad stars and then the seven sisters. And the Targeta planet is where the Palladians that we're tapping into are, have originated from. And that planet is of six dimensional frequency. So we're at three dimensional frequency. So you can see the gotcha. difference right. in in uh, advancement of evolution of consciousness right. and, you know, the magical mysteries of what uh, this technology could really bring for us. We're very behind in terms of advancement and technology at this point. And that's okay. Right. That's why we've come back here because we're, we're all come back here to anchor more light, to raise the frequency, to help the planet. So when we get higher and higher, we move from fifth dimension to sixth dimensional beings they can then transcend into non-physical. So we you know, think about an ice cube and we're melting the ice cube and transcending up. That's essentially what ascension is. Okay. Hmm. We're okay. going to be able to transcend up into light. Yeah. Pretty, pretty that's profound. Good stuff. Hey? <laughs> <laughs> that's what oh. that's what it is. I mean. Does that simply explain? And, it, and yeah. it explains why the true nature of the thing doesn't change. I mean, at a quantum physics level, ice is made up of the same stuff as water, which is made up of the same stuff as steam, mm -hmm. which the thought of H2O, the thought of those stages we just discussed is made up of the same, because if thoughts are real, if they could put electrodes on your brain and measure whether you're having a weak thought or an intense thought, mm -hmm. what are they picking up? Well, something's emanating out. So the nature of that thought is made up of the same stuff as ice, as water, as steam. It's still H2O. It's just vibrating very, very quickly. You can't right. see right. it. But that doesn't mean that it doesn't exist because we pick up on thoughts all the time. So thought is real and our vibration is unique. Like our DNA is unique, our fingerprint is unique, our iris is unique, our voice print, our vibration as a person is unique. So that goes some way to explaining how you can tune into another person without them actually being there at the physical level. You can tune into them energetically it's still them like the h2o it's still made up of the same stuff and it's not dead so to speak it's not in spirit form it's in high vibrational form so as we raise our vibration the component of us that is solid so to speak call it the ice or the water is getting okay. less and less and the component of us that's moving into let's call it steam and thought and energy, that's like we're moving from our physical body to our energetic right. Very body. interesting analogy, right. okay, yeah. yeah. I hope you're following me because it's a Absolutely. good one. It's dropping yeah. in as I'm saying it. Yeah. But that is what's going on with us, yeah? We're just moving form, but we're still the same thing in essence. <laughs>